Hey everyone, Andrea Walford here. Welcome to Make Beautiful Cards. In this quick tip video, I'm going to show you how to use a stamp -a jig to achieve perfectly placed stamped images. Now a stamp -a jig is a stamp positioning tool, so it's a tool that's been designed to make it easier for you to make sure that your image or greeting gets stamped exactly where you want it on your card. Now the stamp -a jig isn't the only stamp positioning tool on the market, but I would say that it's the most economical and therefore a good stamp positioning tool to get when you're just starting out building your card making stash. And if your stash includes cling mounted rubber stamps, then you'll definitely find this to be a good addition to your stamping toolkit. The reason for this is that most of the larger stamp positioning tools rely on you being able to see through your stamp. So photopolymer stamps. Because you can't see through rubber, it's a bit more challenging to be accurate when working with these larger stamp positioning tools. So let's take a look at what is included when you buy this tool. First of all, let me mention that I bought this particular stamp -a jig from Stampin' Up! over 10 years ago, and unfortunately, they no longer sell them. However, you can buy the exact same thing online from a variety of different manufacturers. The color is different, but everything else is the same. Now, when you buy a stamp -a jig it comes with two pieces. This T-shaped tool, which for simplicity, you'll hear me refer to as the T-tool, and then this acetate or plastic sheet. Now, this acetate sheet is thicker than the ones you buy at the office supply store. Now, as you can see, it's transparent, but it's not as crystal clear as a transparency or window sheet from office supply stores. This has two different surfaces. On one side, there is this shiny surface, and then on the other side, it has this textured surface. Now, I pretty much always tend to work on the shiny side. Now, if you take a close look at the T-tool, so this is where it gets its name, you'll notice that the bottom is not completely flat all the way across. So at the bottom of this plastic tool, there's this foam mat, but you can see here that there's this little lip or ledge. So you need to pay attention to this when you're aligning your acetate sheet in the corner. So let me show you how to use this. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using Stampin' Up's Tasteful Touches Cling Stamp Set. And we're going to be using this greeting, the flower, and this leaf image. Now, as you can see, I already have my stamps mounted onto clear acrylic blocks. So the first tip when you're working with your stamp -a jig to make sure you get good results is to make sure you choose acrylic blocks that are as close in size to your stamp as you can possibly get. And then when you mount your stamp, you want to do your best to center your stamp on the block. So you don't want there to be a lot of extra space around the stamp and you don't want your stamp to be offset because that can cause rocking of the block, which will make it harder to stamp your image where you want it to be. Now I've got here my black ink and I'm using a dye based ink here. You want to make sure that when you essentially create your template on this acetate sheet that you use a dye based ink because you want to be able to wipe it off afterwards. I'm going to be working on a piece of whisper white cardstock and I think I've cut this to standard card front size because I'm probably going to turn this into a card. So it's four by five and a quarter inches. And you'll find it helpful when you are working with a stamp -a jig to also have a clear acrylic graph ruler and to have some kind of a pencil. Now, when I'm working with a stamp -a jig, the first thing that I like to do is to try to temporarily secure my cardstock to my grid paper. So I have here this temporary repositionable adhesive called Herma Dotto. And I just like to apply a little bit to my grid paper. So I'm not sure if you can see that little slight blue tinged dotted adhesive. That's the adhesive. And then I also like to align my cardstock with the lines on my grid paper. So if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I always work on Stampin' Up! grid paper. So the first thing we need to do is to create our template. So remember that little lip that I mentioned in the corner of the T-tool. When you take your acetate sheet, you want to make sure that it slides into that little groove, which means it's going to be slightly underneath the lip or the edge in this corner of the T-tool. Then you're gonna take your stamp 
and you're going to ink it up. Now, what if you're working with a different colored ink? Well, generally, I always create my plastic template here using a dark ink because it's just much easier to see. So my ink of preference is my black ink. So now, with my left hand, I'm right-handed, so if you're left-handed, you're just gonna flip the instructions around. So you can see I'm holding on to my tea tool and then I'm also holding on to my acetate sheet because I want to make sure that it stays tucked into the corner of my tea tool. My block, I'm starting high up in the air and then I'm positioning it near the top of the tea tool, making sure it's anchored in the corner. And then slowly, I'm pressing straight down and straight up. If you're not sure if you got it straight, then just slide down a second time and then lift straight up. And if the image is blurred, that means that you didn't quite get it straight. And it looks like I actually missed a corner. There we go, of the U. Now, when it comes to sentiments that are big and long like this, I like to give myself a guideline. So that's where the pencil and ruler comes in. So I want this, the life are better with, to be at about a half an inch up from the bottom of my cardstock piece. So I've got my acrylic grid ruler and I've got my pencil and I'm just very lightly, so I'm not applying any pressure at all, dragging my pencil across my cardstock to create this light line. Maybe I'll move this up so you can make sure you can see it better. Now, looking through my acetate sheet, I'm aligning those words, life are better with, onto that line and then visually, I'm making sure that this is centered between the left and the right edges. Now I'm gonna hold this sheet in place and I'm gonna take my tool and I'm gonna tuck it back against the sheet. Now generally, because this tool is partially on cardstock, partially on my grid paper, there's this little bit of a lip. So my acetate sheet right now, although it's tucked in along this edge, it's not tucked in along that edge. So I'm gonna press it down with my finger and make sure it gets tucked in completely. And then if I need to readjust my position at all, I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I don't, it's good. Now I'm going to ink my stamp. Remove my acetate sheet, but at this point now you have to be very careful that your tea tool doesn't move and your cardstock doesn't move. I'm gonna take my block and I'm going to tuck it into the corner and I'm starting high at the top again. And then slowly, I'm gonna slide this down along the corner of the block. I'm going to apply some pressure and I'm gonna lift straight up. And there you can see my image is perfectly stamped on that line. So you've seen me stamp a greeting. Now let's take a look at using this for an actual image. So when you're finished using your acetate sheet, you want to make sure you clean that off. I'm just using a baby wipe. You can see I'm wiping that off. And then if you have a paper towel or Kleenex tissue, cloth, something handy, you're going to want to dry it. Or you can do what I do, which is I just flip it to another corner where it's dry. So I'm gonna move this off to the side and I'm once again making sure it's tucked in. I'm now gonna take my flower image and I'm going to ink it up and this time I'm using my Melon Mambo Classic ink. This is a nice dark ink so it'll show up against my acetate sheet and then I'm creating my template in the same way I did before. Now I didn't press down all the way so I'm just stamping again. And there you can see it shows through nicely on my acetate sheet. So this is another example of why I like this tool so much, because if I were just to take my flower and try to position it, I may or may not get it exactly where I wanted it. I could stamp it too far. I could stamp it a little bit too close, maybe not on the right angle. By using my template here, I can see exactly how I want to position it. So for example, the tip of the H, maybe I want to nestle that right here in the flower, like so, you see that? But then I wanna make sure that this is angled a little bit because I don't want it to get too, too close to my words over there. So now that I know where I want it to be, I can go ahead and tuck my tool against my acetate sheet, again, making sure that it's well tucked into the corner. 
stamp, move it a little bit further away, like so. Now I can remove my template and I'm going to ink up my stamp once again, being very careful not to move my T-tool, tuck my tool into the top, slide it straight down, apply pressure, lift straight up, and you can see I have my image stamped exactly where I want it to, to be. Next, I want to stamp my leaves. Now I'm going to be using Granny Apple Green Classic ink. Because this is a fairly light ink, it's not gonna show up nicely on my acetate sheet. So here you can see I've gone ahead and stamped it in my black ink once again. I'm going to place a mask over top of my flower. Now I created this mask out of a type of paper called masking paper. So it's basically a paper that has a very low tack adhesive on one side and I didn't cut this well. So let me just grab another one. So it has a very low tack adhesive and basically what it's purpose is, is to protect my image as I'm now going ahead to stamp my leaves, like so. So when I stamp my leaf image, as you can see here, I'm not going to get my leaf over stamped on my flower because it'll show through and it'll look awful. So now I'm going to have to kind of detach my cardstock from my grid paper and I'm going to have to shift it because when I created my template, my stamp is in this position. And when you have um, a stamp that doesn't have a clear orientation, like a clear up or down, you really have to be pay attention to what position your stamp was in when you created your template. Because believe me, sometimes I've created my template, forgotten which orientation my stamp was in, flipped my block around, and then ended up stamping upside down and not noticing. Because there are some stamps that, like this one is a little bit easy to tell because you can see the stem, but let's say there's some stamps with flowers that are almost identical all the way around the perimeter and it's hard to tell the orientation. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to position this where I want it. And I'm thinking that I'd like to stamp some leaves here and I'd like to stamp some leaves here. So I'm going to overlap my template with my cardstock. And because this is on an angle, see if I put my T-tool, it becomes very awkward for me to stamp. I'm gonna rotate my cardstock so that my stamp -a jig is in the same position relative to me. Once again, I'm tucking my acetate sheet in the corner. I'm gonna move my ink on this side. Make sure my stamp is in the same orientation. I'm gonna make sure it's well inked. Hold my T-tool. Now in this case, this is where having a repositionable adhesive is important because this will keep my cardstock, because as you can see, there's only a little corner of my cardstock being held down by the T-tool. So the repositionable adhesive is going to help keep it from sliding. So now again, without moving my T-tool, taking my stamp and stamping. Now when you're stamping over a mask, you do have to apply a little bit more pressure where the stamp is gonna overlap the mask because you can see it creates this little lip, but that's okay because you can fix that with a stamp and write marker. So now I'm gonna rotate my paper once again, but first let me bring this back to see where I want these leaves stamped. So I think I want this like this, just slightly tucked, and I'm gonna rotate my cardstock again. This time my T-tool is holding my cardstock down nicely, so I don't have to worry about that too much. I'm gonna slide away my sheet ink my stamp, remember tuck it into the top, slide straight down, press and lift. Now, see here where these lines are overlapping my mask? If I did not have my mask, you would see these on my stamped images. But then look, you peel this back, it looks like the leaves were tucked right underneath and you have this beautiful simply stamped card. You just need to clean up a few details. Use a marker to fill in those extra little lines, add a few rhinestones, mat this on a colored card and you've got a beautiful simple card. So there you have it friends. You've now seen how easy it is to use the Stamp-a-Majig and I thought I'd come back and just show you my finished card. So I used the stamp -a jig same technique I showed you to add a few more leaves to fill in that white space there, added a few more rhinestones 
mounted it onto some foam and then mounted it onto my card to give it a bit of dimension. And you can see we now have a simple, beautiful card with everything perfectly stamped and positioned where we want it. Now I will have a video on the Stamparatus, which is one of those larger, more robust stamp positioning tools I mentioned earlier. And I'll also have a video that compares and contrasts the Stampamajig with the larger stamp positioning tool. In the meantime though, I hope that you found this video to be helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be back soon with another quick tip video. See ya.